Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Jeff and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. Today, Dr. Kathy Miller will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, Freedom in Christ. But first, please join us in some praise and worship music to glorify the Lord. Sit a while with me. 
Today, I'm going to discuss freedom in Christ. The definition of freedom is generally having the ability to act or change without constraint. Sometimes is free, something is free if it can change easily and is not constrained in its present state. A person has the freedom to do things that will not, in theory or in practice, be prevented by other forces. Spiritual freedom is being in place where, in spite of whatever life may bring, we are free to draw from the unseen power within us to deal with the challenges and losses. Spiritual freedom is a space or place of existence that is in complete alignment with the Spirit of God. Nothing is missing, everything is complete. Our main text is John 8 verses 31 through 36, which says, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. As Jesus says, if we hold to his teachings, we will be his disciples, knowing the truth. He is the source of truth, and the truth sets us free. Jesus sets us free from sin. He does not give us freedom to do whatever we want to do. He gives us freedom to follow him. His truth provides us with what we need to be all that God wants us to be. Sin can enslave us, control us, dominate us, and dictate our actions. But Jesus can set us free from our sin. We need to believe in him and follow his example. Then we can truly be free. Freedom in Jesus does not come from power, but from submission, not from control, but from surrender. God wants his children to be free from sin, not slaves to sin. He wants us to be governed by love, not by law. So his love gives us the freedom to worship him and to love him with all of our hearts. Since we are forgiven by the only one who could condemn us, we are truly free. In Romans chapter 6, Paul discusses how we are saved from sin by grace. But we are not to continue sinning, thinking that grace may increase. No, we died to sin when we accepted Christ as our Savior. We should not continue sinning on purpose. We are baptized into Christ Jesus, so we are baptized into his death. And since we are baptized into his death, we will also be raised from the dead as Christ was raised from the dead, giving us a new life. Anyone who has died in Christ has been freed from sin, but we do not have the freedom to sin as much as we want. We are to turn away from sin and be more like Jesus. God's forgiveness gives us the freedom to pursue a life with him. Paul continues that our sinful nature died once and for all when Christ died on the cross, so we are freed from its power. Our sinful nature still exists, but we can choose to not obey its pull. We no longer need to live under sin's power. We can choose to obey and live in Christ. One commentator puts it this way. If you were put in jail, forgotten, abused, assaulted, then you were freed, would you want to be put in jail again? 
then why would we want to continue sinning after we have accepted Christ and been set free from sin? Unfortunately, we are prone to thinking negatively with a defeated attitude. What would it be like to start each day with a positive, victorious attitude? We should live as freed prisoners, not wanting to go back to jail. In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 2, Paul says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Jesus took our judgment to the cross. He took on our sins so that we could be held blameless before God. We deserve God's judgment and hell for our sins, but Jesus took the judgment and hell for us. He sacrificed himself for us so that we could be free from sin once and for all. We are no longer condemned to live a life of sin. We can live by the Spirit and be free from sin and death. Thank God for making a way for us to, be, to live a free life with the power to do His will. Paul also told the Galatians about freedom from sin. Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And Galatians 5.13 says, You, my brothers, are, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather serve one another in love. Like the Romans letter, the Galatians letter emphasizes that we are free to do as we wish, but we should not continue sinning. We are free to love and help one another. We are not held to the law anymore. We should not allow rules, methods, or special conditions for being saved or growing in Christ run our lives. We should live in the Spirit. We have the freedom to serve others and should take advantage of this freedom to glorify God. God not only sets us free from sin, but he also sets us free from negative emotions. As Psalm 118 verse 5 says, In my anguish I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. We can go to the Lord with our fears, pain, sadness, questions, etc., and receive freedom from these things. He is willing to help us when we pray to him. Psalm 119 verse 32 gives us another example of God's freedom. It says, I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. God frees our hearts and souls to live for him if we follow his commands. It is nice to know we can have peace within our hearts. We just need to follow God's commandments. So, if we follow Jesus' commands, we will be his disciples and will know the truth. The truth will set us free to follow Christ and to do his will. We are freed from sin due to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, and we should not want to sin anymore. We should allow the Spirit to guide our hearts and actions. Our hearts can be set free if we follow Jesus' commands. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this message on freedom. Thank you for your sacrifice allowing us to be free from sin. Help us to follow your commands so that we can know the truth and the truth can set us free. Help us to follow the Spirit to be set free from the law of sin and death. Be with everyone watching this video and bring us back safely on Sunday for our regular church service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Thank you, Kathy, and thank you everyone for tuning in to our midweek devotional. If you've been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click on the bell to be notified of our future videos. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your entire family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord may bless you so that you then may become a blessing to others.